Hello everybody, this is Gary. Today is June 27th, 2019, Thursday. It is 10.19 a.m. in Rochester, New York. This is my coping with schizophrenia check-in. Um, today I wanted to talk about when a person should go to the psychiatric emergency room, um, which in Rochester, New York, usually involves calling 911 and they send the police who pat you down to make sure you're not carrying any weapons, even if you're the one they called, and an ambulance to take you to the psychiatric emergency room. Um, I would go to the psychiatric emergency room and call 911 and explain calmly as possible to the operator why you think you want to go to the hospital. And usually it should be because you're feeling suicidal or because you're feeling violent. Those are usually the two criteria that they use to admit people into the hospital. In Rochester, New York, and other places across the United States, a lot of mental hospitals, psychiatric hospitals, however you want to term them, both private and government-owned have been closed down. Um, so hospital beds are hard to come by. Psychiatric hospital beds are hard to come by. And often they don't have enough room to admit you into the hospital. Um, if you're not suicidal and you're not violent, even if you want to be admitted, you may not be admitted. Um, so I would just go to the hospital if you're feeling suicidal and violent and you don't know about your own ability to control your own behavior, I would go to the psychiatric emergency room. But how do you avoid going to the psychiatric emergency room? Well, keep a list of things to do during the day and keep a schedule. Um, have a list of friends, social workers, um, doctors, your therapist, somebody that you can reach on a moment's notice and talk things over. Um, have hobbies, have ways to distract yourself like reading a book or watching a movie. Um, and, uh, you know, have conversations with friends. And if you don't have friends, it might be a good idea to learn social skills to make friends. The more isolated you are, the more likely you are to end up in a psychiatric hospital. Loneliness is a big problem. So try to learn with your therapist or somebody else how to build social skills and making friends and having a f list of friends to talk to and discuss things with that you trust that you could be able to discuss just about anything with them and um, have a list of hotline numbers. Most cities in the, in, uh, the United States at least, have, at least have suicide hotlines and psychiatric emergency hotlines um, to talk things over with people over the phone. Um, keep up uh, a list of recreational things to do, things that you enjoy doing, um, and try to put that into your daily schedule. Um, be around people as much as possible so that you could talk to and socialize and feel less isolated. Um, stay away from drugs and alcohol, including caffeine. Caffeine, alcohol, um, any other drug mixed in with your psychiatric medication and mixed in with um, your symptoms. Drugs are just going to either make you homeless, end up in jail because they are illegal. And because a lot of hospitals have been closing, if you break the law and you're mentally ill, there's a good chance you're going to end up in jail or prison, regardless of your disorder. So stay away from alcohol and drugs because those will lead to being in jail, homelessness, or even suicide or violence for that matter. Um, there's been a lot less sympathy, it seems to me, for mentally ill people who commit a crime, especially if it's a violent crime, they may not end up in the hospital. They will, unless they're just being evaluated, but eventually they'll end up in jail and prison, um, which is unfortunately is the new insane asylums in the United States. For some odd reason, the states and the private health companies have been closing down psychiatric hospitals. Rochester, New York has lost, um, let's see, Genesee Hospital, the local state hospital, um, St. Mary's Hospital, they've all closed beds or they've closed down completely for psychiatric care. Um, so there's a lot less psychiatric beds available and a lot of people are ending up homeless or they're ending up in jail. And um, so a good way to avoid jail, of course, is not to break the law. And if you feel like you're going to do something violent or illegal, uh, call the police on yourself and go to the psychiatric emergency room. Um, but there's a lot of uh, 
homeless people in Rochester who are mentally ill. Not all homeless people are mentally ill, obviously, but a good chunk of them are. Um, so keep a list of things to do, people to talk to, uh, emergency hotlines for suicide. Keep a, a list of somebody, either your therapist or somebody that your therapist works with that you can call in a moment's notice and talk to. Um, keep up a daily schedule, stay away from alcohol and drugs. Um, and if you have any doubts about your safety for yourself or for other people, call 911. At least that's the way we do it in Rochester, New York. Um, I have no knowledge about what to do outside the United States. I've never been outside the United States except going to Canada a few times. Um, so just do your best to keep in contact with other people around you, friends, family, um, people you can talk to. If you're religious, a pastor, a rabbi, a priest, um, I personally am an atheist, so I don't usually use those for people to talk to. Um, but if you have a spiritual or religious background, uh, most religions and most spiritual practices have people you can talk to who engage in that particular spiritual practice or religion or belief system. Um, why I became an atheist, um, well, I guess I'll save that for another video. Um, Although I do also use churches for food and uh, free meals. I know that sounds hypocritical because I'm an atheist, but I'm not stupid. Uh, free food is free food. But uh, anyways, if you have any comments about what I just said or went through or any suggestions, leave them in the uh, comment section. And stay safe. And don't do anything to hurt yourself or others.